Kevin and Cassie with Katie Psych. So now let's go over anxiety disorders. First, we have panic disorders. Now panic disorders require at least one panic attack. And a panic attack is anything such as heart palpitations, sweating, um, different, different feelings of anxiety inside, and things that can actually lead to you passing out. They usually last less than 30 minutes. And at least one of those is required for you to say that you have panic disorder. Um, now you can have multiple panic episodes, of course. However, panic episodes can be brought on randomly. There's not necessarily a cause that's required. Um, and they are debilitating at the time. Whereas this is different from generalized anxiety disorder. Generalized anxiety disorder, or GAD, as they call it, um, is that anxiety feeling, but it isn't completely life debilitating. Okay, you can still go about your day. Now, it is very generalized, which distinguishes it from um, two under is social phobia. Now, what's a phobia? So, a phobia is an intense fear of something that is life debilitating from that specific piece. Okay, that specific thing, such as arachnophobia. Somebody that has arachnophobia is having a life debilitation from seeing spiders, as an example. Right? And then same thing, claustrophobia in small spaces, etc. Social phobia is specific for social environments and it actually um, causes you to have at least debilitation in those situations. Whereas generalized anxiety disorder is a generalized anxiety, not just in social environments. Okay? Moving on, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. It's kind of obvious that it's after a stress, right? Post-traumatic. Um, now, this doesn't mean that you know what that stress was. And sometimes psychologists, such as Fortean psychologists, try to get to the underlying root. Um, and in doing so, sometimes they actually get people to admit things that aren't necessarily true. That's not the point. So post-traumatic stress disorder is a life debilitation, such as sweats and such, um, or nightmares, something that occurs again and again after that traumatic stress that has debilitated you in some way. Your quality of life has diminished from that post or from that stress. Acute stress disorder is a temporary issue. Now, of course, you've probably like broken up with somebody before and you had, you know, it was a very stressful time, you're very depressed and this and that for, you know, a set amount of time, or you had a family member pass away and that caused you to be really stressed for the amount of time and your life was not the same because of it. Um, at least in those couple months, like you couldn't actually function, you were apathetic, lethargic, etc. That, or you had intense anxiety from it, that goes under acute stress disorder. So keep in mind that acute stress and post-traumatic stress disorder, they're different from the time frame. The time frame is what distinguishes them. And then lastly, we have OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, which an obsession is you constantly thinking about something such as constantly thinking about whether you locked the house when you left this morning. Now, even if you remembered locking your house, you were obsessed with it and you would think of it again and again and again. The compulsion, on the other hand, is being compulsed to actually do something about it, to um, wish that you can go over and lock the door again and again and again, just to make sure you have that satisfaction of knowing that it's locked. Now, these are A, not normal, yes, but then B, sometimes they underline these, these motives of perfection. And so these obsessive compulsive disorder patients are actually obsessing and compulsing over these things because they, they have a different view of what is perfect um, relating to whatever it is that they're obsessing or compulsing about. Okay, so that's the end of the anxiety disorders.